The story of Atlantis has intrigued humanity for millennia. It has confounded the experts and brought wonderment to the general public. Ever since Plato described in great detail the history and demise of that Atlantean empire in his writings of Critias and Timaeus from around 400 BC. So if the story is real history, why and when did the Atlantean Empire crumble? And why have we heard so few details about this dominant economic and military force of the ancient world? Were the ancient Atlantean star mappers and earth mappers back in the Ice Age, as some historians suggest? Did Atlanteans have the capacity for space travel? And did they disappear through some vortex-like wormhole? Or were they destroyed by some galactic upheaval, as some mythologists suggest? Does the story of Atlantis even confirm some biblical accounts of the book of Genesis? This documentary explores the newly discovered, down-to-earth findings of several offshore sites now considered to be a part of the ancient Atlantean Empire, and considers their implications for the timing of when Atlantis was consumed by the sea. These findings also show that this ancient civilization founded by the legendary figure Atlas must have had highly advanced and accurate mapping methods which enabled these Atlanteans to successfully measure and map the earth, thereby allowing them the ability to navigate to far-flung locations throughout the world, representing an empire of global proportions that was wiped out at the end of the Ice Age. I absolutely do think that the story of Atlantis fits into real history. Uh, and, and just to put that in, in context, if we, if we look at what mainstream scholars uh, regard as the recent history of the Earth, everybody is agreed that there was an event called the Last Ice Age, and that the Last Ice Age came to an end rather cataclysmically about 12,000 years ago. And the story of Atlantis, if we go back to the original source of the story of Atlantis, the earliest surviving source to have come down to us is the Greek philosopher Plato. And Plato, who of course knew nothing about Ice Ages, nevertheless set the demise of Atlantis precisely at the time that the vast ice sheets that covered huge areas of the Earth were melting down and pouring their meltwater into the oceans and raising sea levels by 400 feet all around the world. There are over 200 known sunken cities in the Mediterranean. And the idea that there's over 200 sunken cities in the Mediterranean is indicative that the whole Atlantic and the Mediterranean were flooded in some kind of catastrophe. These ruins are associated often with Atlantis. There's a certain type of polygonal megalithic construction that's very uh, distinct. And you see this in these ruins that are still above water, but you see the same kind of construction in these underwater ruins too. Megalithic building with gigantic sculpted stones is considered by almost all the experts to have begun around 2500 BC. From the Great Pyramid of Giza, to Stonehenge in England, to Bayelbek of the ancient Canaanites, and even to the dolmens and citadels of southern Spain. One form of megalithic construction that is found all over the world is known as cyclopean. And cyclopean construction is giant granite or some other stone boulders that have been shaped and are usually fitted together in, in a jigsaw pattern where they, the stones are perfectly fitted and locked in together. We can find it in Spain, we can find it in Greece, in Turkey, uh, in the Middle East. Uh, we can even find it in, in Mexico and other areas. And the similarity of this unusual type of construction in my mind, is evidence of a, a singular source for this construction method, and I believe that is Atlantis. So off the coast of southern Spain are submerged megaliths in like f at least five sites, off of Lixus, Morocco, west of Gibraltar, off of Tarifa, which is right near Gibraltar, off of Huelva, Rota, and Chipiona. 
submerged megaliths in 50 to 100 feet of water, which are of the megalithic, well-hewn rock forms, walls, citadels, paving stones for streets, the whole bit, discovered at these four locations offshore, submerged when the Ice Age ended. The capital city of Atlantis was a canal city with concentric canals and rings leading in to an inner city and, and port area. And Plato describes the city of Atlantis very uh, specifically this way. The city of Carthage built in Tunisia by the Phoenicians was in many ways a miniature model of the capital city of Atlantis with also these concentric circles and canals leading to an inner city. In many ways, uh, Carthage was a, a rebuilding of the ancient capital of Atlantis. Another thing that a, a lot of your Atlantean researchers will point to is the cross of Atlantis, is the symbol of Atlantis derived from Plato's description of the, of the, of the central city of Atlantis. And the cross of Atlantis shows three concentric rings with a cross in the center with a canal emerging from the cross. And this is, again, thought to be a description of the, the, the central city of Atlantis. I believe that Atlantis was a maritime civilization and I believe it was based on coastlines and that it was globally distributed. I think it was all over the world. I think it was virtually everywhere, but it was on coastlines. And the reason that so little evidence that historians will accept have come down to us is because those coastlines were all submerged and are now under a hundred feet of water since the end of the last ice age and nobody has looked there. So I think actually the, the influence of a great lost civilization is to be found all around the world and I think one of the places in which it was very active uh, was in the Mediterranean and in the eastern side of what we now call the Atlantic Ocean.